Hello everybody and welcome back to the show. It's the pre-order weekend. It's the corn pre-order weekend. So, I hope everyone has uh, put their uh, pre-orders in, awaiting the new arrivals to corn's blessed army. But, I know it's a weekend show and I normally act like a catalogue for GW, but going to be a bit different today. We're just going to go over what we know so far, just by updates on the AOS app and snippets that have been in the week on the community page but before I start I want to just say I had a little bit of a mess up I want to say thank you to the guy in the uh, comment section who pointed out the mess up where I said they tried to make a big thing about Skull Taker and his rules haven't changed Decapitating Strike has changed I'll admit that it's not only is it on the 6 you get the 3 for Skull Taker. I'll read it out to you now. It says, If the un unmodified hit roll for the attack made with the Slayer Sword is 6, that attack inflicts 3 mortal wounds on the target in addition to any normal damage. So, I had a quick look at the Blood Letters and the Blood Master. Decapitate, decapitating Strike is roughly the same on all of them. It's you get the on the roll of six you inflict one mortal wound in addition to any any normal damage. Skull Taker has a big beefy version of this, but all corn arm all blood letters in the corn army have the one mortal wound and any additional attacks. So it's a nice little buff. I'm gonna I'm gonna eat my words on what I said last time. The captain strike is a nice little buff and I do like it again it's not going to be groundbreaking but it's a nice little buffer but again I'm going to point out my mistakes I am only human after all so I've taken some time I've gone over the articles and I just want to go over what we know about judgments and the um, skull altar so before we go into that I just want to have a few words and what I wanted to talk about is the content on this channel. I've said it's going to be AOS and Blood Bowl, but it's been mostly Blood Bowl related. Um, I have fallen a bit behind with the, my model count, but I'm hoping to get that sorted within the next couple of weeks. The pre-order week has uh, really given me an incentive, especially ordering a new Battle Tome, new models, but not no new terrain. I've left that for a bit but yeah I just wanted to say uh, there is going to be AOS on you it's not just going to be Blood Bowl and I just sh I'm just asking you guys are you enjoying the Blood Bowl content is it something that you want to see ongoing or is it something you'd rather me not do but so I'm gonna be honest with you I'm really enjoying putting it out there it's something we don't see a lot I feel in the Blood Bowl community because a lot of people are doing it online or they just doing the events rather than just doing in in club gaming. So um yeah, it's, if you're enjoying it let me know and um, we'll try and sort something out. If you're in the Ronda area and you wanna have a match against me or Chris, um let us um, put a message on the the email and we'll try and sort something out with them. And yeah, yeah, that's basically it. And oh, in the next week or so, I'm hoping to get a little bit of a special video out there. Something new, but vintage at the same time. It's something that I used to do. I say vintage, the channel hasn't been going that long. It's something that I used to do originally, but it's a bit of a new setup. So... You know, I think they, I think I'll call it like retro. There you go. It's a bit of bit of retro going to be going on in the next week. So, fingers crossed I can get that out ASAP. But that's not why we're here. We're here because we want to get into the new corn stuff. So, 
let's have a look at the judgments right then guys as we got up on the screen we got judgments we've got the rafax the bleeding icon and the hex scorger i think that's what they called hex scorger skulls so the skulls come in a pair so they class as one but from what i've understood over the last week these are not good these are um judgments they're not endless spells because they treated a little bit differently so it's not just anybody in a corn army can take it um it's um the priests so it'd be the slaughter priests so this is why i've kind i've not picked these up yet myself because running a demon army there's no priests so it would be a little bit wasteful for me to pick it up at the moment and it would just add to the big the big resin pile i've got of miniatures so i've kept away from that for a bit perhaps when i venture out into other parts or unless there's um there's equipment to turn your like say blood master into a priest as well perhaps if that's the case i might pick them up but at the moment no they are only used by the priests they uh, you will summon them on a three four out of five i think and unlike in the spells they are not able to be unbinded by wizards so if they're on the field they are doing a lot of damage for wizards and and the rest of the army so um rather than me rambling on about my opinions on them let's have a look at some of the war scrolls for them right then guys first up we've got the hex gorger skulls that's probably wrong the way i'm saying it but that's the interpretation we're going to carry on with the rest of the uh, video let me know if i'm saying it wrong right it's a pair of skulls now when you summon them so let's have a look uh judgments of corn at the start of your hero phase one friendly corn priest that's an oxymoron i don't think there is ever a friendly corn priest that's seems bizarre can attempt to perform a judgment if they do so make a judgment roll by rolling a dice on a three plus the judgment roll is successful if the judgment roll is successful set the hex gorgeous skull model within six inches of each other and wholly within eight inches of the corn priest similar setup to end the spells but and it's the same mechanics it's just done at different times so the abilities of the skulls when the judgment is set up the player who set it up can immediately make a move with it in addition at the start of each of the subsequent hero phases the player who set his judgment up can make a move with it if it's still on the battlefield when you move the judgment you can move it up to eight inches and it can fly both models of the judgment must finish they move within six inches of each other so similar type of rules to end the spells where they've got to you know move at certain points in the game that's compelled by hate right let's go on to hex gorgeous hex gorgeous skulls uh exist purely to destroy magic hunting in tandem they feed upon the arcane knowledge of their prey regurgitating the power as they consume as jets of boiling blood whose touch is death to wizard kind subtract two from casting rolls for wizards while they are within 12 inches of hex gorgeous skulls models in addition if a wizard attempts to cast a spell while while it is with 12 inches of both models of the same skulls so if by the sound of that this you've got a chance of um summoning a few skulls on the table if if that's your poison um 
uh, hex forged skulls, and the casting roll is under modified eight. Then our casting spell, our casting attempt is not successful, and the wizard no longer knows our spell. And each wizard within twelve inches of the judgment of course the cone suffers d6 mortal wounds. So these are your wizard killers basically, and what makes it worse is wizards can't unbind it. So yeah, this thing is really minimizing their effectiveness and their lifespan on the table if they're unlucky enough to roll an eight. So yeah, that's a nice little fun fun rule. I kinda like that. I I do and it's yeah, it's moving on the table, it's attacking your wizards and yeah, it's it's minimizing their effectiveness so if you've got somebody that likes to throw a mystic shield and they roll an eight they don't know mystic shield anymore so yeah and i think this is if you were going up against like grand horse and the gas this is what's gonna help you out a lot in the long run with the amount of spells they can throw out so yeah i like that um let's see what else we right guys we're gonna move on to the the bleeding icon which to me looks like the I icon bearer's staff has decided to give his icon steroids and let him just run across the battlefield because it's just like a nice big beefy version of that but i digress in my daydreaming and let's get on with the show so judgments of corn how to summon the bleeding icon at the start of the hero phase one friendly priest, priest can attempt to uh, perform the judgment uh, judgment roll by rolling a dice on a four plus the judgment roll is successful the judgment roll is successful set it up within eight inches of the cone same as same as the skulls but um there's a four plus so what abilities has this got or oh, let's pick sigil of doom if the unit fails a battle shot test within three inches of any models with this ability, um, add d3 to the number of models that flee. This ability has no effect on corn units. So it's a battle shock buffer, which is always good when you want models to flee and you need a few more to run. So, yeah, it's not, not the be all end all of the uh, model, but it's a nice little buff. Crushing Retribution. After this model has moved, each unit that the model has passed across and each uh, and each other unit that is within one inch of the model is it suffers D3 mortal wounds. So uh, it's wo well worth your time to keep this in the front of your army if you've got it. Because you don't want this thing passing over you and taking out your, your units. Because it doesn't say it has no effect on clone units. Drifting Menace. When, at the, when the judgment is set up, the player who set it up can immediately make a move with it. In addition, at the start of each of the subsequent hero phases, the player who set this judgment can make a move with it. Still on the battlefield, when you move this judgment, it can move up to 8 inches and can fly. So it says subsequent hero phases, and the other one said subsequent hero phases. So I'm not quite sure. I'm going to put it down to just being an absolute noob and an amateur that even in your opponent's hero phase that you can you can move it so this thing can get around the board and he's doing damage all the time because it doesn't say to go in one direction it can go wherever you want it to so yeah it's if we can get a couple of these out it's you slowly whittling down the army but as I've said before, it's a shame it's only for corn priests and it's only slaughter priests really that can summon them. So they're really good, but they've limited who can use it. So I think that's a little bit naughty. So I still I still like the skills over this one though, I will say. But what do you guys think? Is this more useful to you? Um is this something you would use more than the skills? Because I gotta be honest. If I, if I was allowed to use these with my demons, I think I'd be trying to get this icon out on the board rather quickly. But that's just me, and I like it going into glorious hand-to-hand -hand combat. 
and now we're going on to the Wrath Axe, which I feel is the best one there, just because it's going to be, because I like reading the uh, the fluff, and when you when you read that, you know, Korn got so angry that, you know, he struck the mortal realms with his, his blade, this feels like that, this feels like he's, he's forgotten his chill pill and he's not happy with how the battle's going so he's just reaching out and he's touching you with his bad touch so before i start going off the tracks again let's read the uh, scroll and then you can tell me what, what you think guys so you know you can always leave that in the comments below right to summon the axe uh i'm not reading all of it on a plus five the judgment road is successful so it's a harder one to to cast because I think it's the better one this is the one that you're always going to aim for hopefully but the skills have got a lot of use too but if they're not like say a uh, wizard heavy army this one's got a bit more utility so 5 plus is successful and you set it within 8 inches of the corn priest as the huge so what we got flung with fury uh, when this judgment is set up, the player who set it up can immediately make a move with it. Same as the other ones, in addition to its subsequent hero phases, the player who set up the judgment can make a move with it. Um, if it is still on the battlefield. So, I want to know how you get rid of these judgments, because they said a few times, if it's still on the battlefield, have you got to, like, take out so many units? Have you got to take out so many models? Is it, um, you take out the priest? I you know is how do you how do you get rid of the judgments uh when you move the judgment it can move up to eight inches and can fly so uh same with all the other ones what's well, quite shocking that corn and his favorite number eight is just appearing all over the place really and you know, so my sarcasm knows no bounds right hatred's edge after the model has moved roll a dice for each unit that uh Roll the dice for each unit that has any models is passed across on a 2 plus that suffers D3 mortal wounds. Then the player that set up this model picks one enemy unit within 3 inches of the model and rolls a dice. The enemy unit may be one that is model passed across. So you can hit the unit twice. On a 2 plus that enemy suffers D6 mortal wounds. So you're going to get hurt just by it passing over and then it's going to like drop the hammer on you. So that's a nice little uh, nice little rule at Hatred's Edge. You can double hit heroes. It's, that's really good. Reality Cleaved. Subtract one from hit rolls for attacks made by units within three inches of this model. Uh, this ability has no effect on corn units. So, not only are you whittling down units and you're whittling down effect in the effectiveness of heroes, it's making it harder for them to attack you, so it's a nice little security blanket for your core units as well. So, I would, to me, this is the best one. No wonder it's harder to get off. So I would have said, this is the one you aim for. Then it's the skulls, and then it's the bleeding icon. But I kind of like the look of the bleeding icon, so I'd probably try and get that out first. But what do you guys think? Do you think these are effective? Do you have an idea about where GW are going with the judgments about trying to get rid of them. Perhaps you don't like them at all. Perhaps you think they, they're useless. Let me know down below. Right then guys, now that we got the judgments out of the way, we're going to have a look at the terrain piece, which, as I said before, I kind of left alone for now, because I thought the War School card, the Battle Tom, and skull taker and herald was a bit more important and i gotta be honest i can't wait to get my hands on skull taker i'm really excited about him but i've left the train piece because like it's only helpful for like two-thirds of the army so i know there's like a you we can all see a rule up on the screen that could benefit them but it just seems like you're not getting the full amount for it and i don't like and i don't like how gw was left out a certain percentage of the the army for this one because they haven't done it with scenery pieces for other factions 
So I'm kind of hoping there's something we don't see just yet. But anyhow, enough of my gripes. So let's get into it. The skull altar is a scenery piece. Um, you want to set it up forward position, but not so much forward that you get in the way of your troops. So perhaps just after your your frontline troops, you might want to set it up because it is quite effective for incoming opponents. So let's go over it and let me know what you guys think. Right then, guys. So now that you've been on the table and you've got your army set up around you the rules for the scenery piece is let's have a look at which bane just picked it randomly subtract one from the casting rolls for wizards while they are within 16 inches of this model i know it's a subtraction of one but it does make a little bit of a help it's not the be all and end all it's not the most effective part of the train piece but the other rule is it's kind of looks cool so rule of cool will always win get it up from the table if that's your type of thing but yeah that's as effective as it's going to be for demons so it's not getting your you're getting your money's worth out of it if you're like me but if you are a war band and you've got your priests you're, you're in luck because you can re-roll praise and judgment rolls for friendly corn priests when they're within eight inches of this model so you don't have to be on it you can be just off to it but it gives you that, that nice little buff because maybe you've got an eight inch bubble all the way around this thing so whether you would have to retreat a little bit which is not ideal or if you're running out to meet the enemy you can re-roll the praise you can re-roll the judgments so there's you know a good chance that you're going to get them off while you while you buy it so this is going to be priority number one if you've got slaughter priests to try and stop you getting close to this to get the buffs then take out your priests but yeah it's it looks all right it's got the bad news of corn so i know a lot of people would be happy about that and probably a lot of world eater players might pick it up just because it's got bad news like they world eaters so what do you guys think do you like do you like the train piece? Do you think of it as a bit meh? Is it a bit of, are you a bit underwhelmed by it by it like I am? But let me know. It's like I said, it's just going to be a quick video. We know there's pre-orders, and hopefully, seeing some of these rules, you might have might decide to pick up like say the judgments or the altar. So just let me know, and I think we're going to call the video there. Right guys, that's the end of the show. I hope you uh, stuck with me throughout the entire thing. Let me know down below, like I said before. Have you picked any of these up? Are you now interested in these type of um, judgments and terrain? Let me know your opinions, because I'm going to be honest with you. I kind of went for the models, because I really do like the look of Skull Taker. And I know that's not for everyone. He probably looks rubbish to a lot of you so again you have to let me know let me know what you think and we can you know have a chat in the comment section because that's what the comment section is there for anyway i want to say a big thank you to all of you who watches the video and if you will share it amongst your friends it would be amazing and before i go i gotta do a bit of shilling because it's just the way i always end the video Please know that we've got PayPal and Patreon. Um, you don't have to use them. Just watching the videos is enough. And that's more than enough for me. Um, I will be recording more Blood Bowl tomorrow. So stay tuned for the video on that. We have got an, an extra video coming out uh, soon. Which is going to be a little bit more interesting for you. Because... I don't want to tell you what it is yet because I just I want to surprise you with it because it may be a thing it may not be but it is Blood Bowl related. Um, we've got a Teespring account so if you find the stall front it's called Noob with the Brush that's the creator's name so come and join us there there will be um, RBBL t-shirts and hoodies going up soon 
and some of them will have like coach and assistant coach put on them as well so if you want to have a, a supportive uh, t-shirt for us when we start the league on the channel that will be amazing just want to say to you guys thank you for listening thank you for watching thank you for passing us around to your friends and i shall see you in future content and stay tuned because we're going to try a few things different on the channel and i i hope you enjoy them so yeah i'll see you in the next show adios amigos peace out